Aston, nice to meet you. What's your name? I'm Zain. Zain, yeah. mashallah. What's your name? Alex. Alex, how are you all doing? How is your day so far? We're doing really well, thank you. Mashallah. So you're Muslim? Zain, are you Muslim? No, no. But my, my dad was. Uh, he wasn't very strict, though. So, uh, are you Muslim? Uh, no, I'm not. Well, what, what belief do you have? Christian. And you? Uh, you're Christian, and you? Christian. Christian Orthodox. And you're Christian Orthodox or born again? Huh? I'm Orthodox. So you believe... You when you say Orthodox, what do you mean by that? Orthodox. I don't really know the actual meaning of it, but I've been told I'm Orthodox. Uh, do, you my my uh, do you believe in Jesus God? No, I believe God is God. Yeah, so you worship God in the name of Jesus? Or you worship God directly? God directly. That's good. That's good. That's, a, that's you're more close to Islam than, than Christianity. Really? Yeah. I mean, you're more close, to be honest, you're close to the true teaching of Jesus than Paul. You know Paul? Paul? Yeah, Paul is uh, one of the rights of the gospel. There's Paul, Mark, Luke, John, Matthew. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Paul is one of the, Paul is the one, to be honest, majority of Christians in our time, they do not really follow Jesus, they follow Paul. That's why you believe Jesus died for your sins. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's not Jesus' teaching. When the young boy came to Jesus, he said, Oh, good master, what should I do? To inherit the kingdom of heaven. So the young boy, he was a Jewish, he was a healthy, uh, uh, he was a, uh, me, sorry, he was a wealthy person, yeah, he was rich. Mm -hmm. So he was asking Jesus, alayhi salam, when we mention Jesus, we mention him with a respectful, in a respectful way. We say, alayhi salam, mean, may Allah's peace and may Allah's uh, uh, blessing be on him. So the young boy said to Jesus, how can I attain eternity, which is in paradise? Jesus said to him, follow the law of God. Okay? Or keep the commandments of God. The commandments of God mean the Torah. Yes? The young boy said to him, I have been doing it since I was young. Jesus said to him, you are lacking one thing. He said, what is it? He said, give your wealth away and follow me. So Jesus clearly is telling the young boy to keep the commandments of God, which many Christians don't follow the Old Testament anymore. Jesus is telling the young boy to follow the Old Testament, the commandments of God. And to give charity and follow Jesus' teaching, yes? But Paul came, he said, it's not about commandments of God, it's not about the law anymore. It's about you having a faith, Jesus died for your sins. But Jesus never said that to the young boy, that believe I'm going to die for your sins, you'll be saved. You know, that's why if you study the history of Christianity, you can, as many Christian scholars said, you can see there's differences between Jesus' teaching, what actual Jesus taught, and what Paul and the gospel writers Imagine Jesus teaching. You understand? So, because we look to Jesus and, and like the prophets and the messengers before Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Noah, Jacob, they came to call people to worship God alone. And they came to tell you, you be responsible for your sins. In, uh, in um, uh, Hosea, uh, no, Hosea, sorry. In uh, sorry, one of the books, Nob Numbers, uh, what is it? The other one. Uh, I forgot the name of the, 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 the book in the Old Testament. It says, even Genesis, uh, Deuteronomy as well. If you commit sin, you'll be responsible for it. Not God or Je I mean, not Jesus died for you or someone. Yes, what you do in Christian and Judaism, they slaughter a sheep. But slaughtering a sheep is an act of worship. Not the sheep, he's taking your sins. No, when you slaughter the sheep, that expiation of sins is understandable. But to say, I'm going to commit rape, pedophilia, murder, everything. But guess what? Jesus died for my sins. It's okay. That doesn't make any sense. No, it you understand? It's not a good thing to think either. Say again? It's not a good thing to think in general. That's true. That's true. Yeah, no doubt. 100%. You know? That's why, you know, subhanAllah, when you look to, uh, like I said, Jesus' teaching and Prophet Muhammad's teaching, Prophet Muhammad the same came with, if you commit sin, you'll be responsible for it. Allah has uh, vast mercy. Allah, uh, a huge mercy. Regardless of how much sins you do, Allah's mercy is greater than your sins. So don't ever give up. You know? And if you commit sin what you do you repent to God try your best to not go back to it and if you take if you did take something from someone you give it back to him being the better person yes oh, but not believe not a Jesus who is innocent person let me give you an example imagine you came took my phone stole my phone so what I do to forgive you I go and punish him am I just not just because why just to give everyone what he deserves he doesn't deserve he never did nothing to me so why in Christianity, we, we go, Jesus, 
was, you know, according to Paul, Jesus became cursed. And he was punished because of the sins of the people. But he never committed sin. That doesn't make any sense. You see, that's why we believe that the Romans and Paul, one of them, they corrupted the true teaching of Jesus. That's why the Bible has been changed many times. That's why when it comes to Islam, Islam is pure. It's perfect. You know, the Quran that we have, 100 million of Muslims memorize the Quran, word for word, letter for letter. You know, no one can change the Quran. Literally, if the Jews and the Muslims and the Christians now decided to burn their scriptures, the only scripture will remain with us is the Quran. You know how? Because we memorized it by heart. You understand? So when you look to Islamic teaching, why we believe Prophet Muhammad is a true prophet? I'm sorry for taking your time, by the way. That's fine, that's yeah. fine. I'm going to conclude with this, inshallah. If you have any questions, you can ask. Pay attention to this, yeah? Islam came to preserve five universal necessities. Five universal necessities Islam came to preserve. First one, Islam came to preserve religion. What does that mean? It means that in Islam, it is forbidden. It is a major sin. It is a, the, the greatest sin to do, to not worship the true God. Because when you worship the true God, I'm going to demonstrate what is the outcome. And also, I'm going to demonstrate to you what is the opposite of not worshiping the true God. So Islam comes to worship God. We don't worship Prophet Muhammad. We don't pray in the name of Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, we pray, we pray in the name of Allah. Who is Allah? The creator of everything. The king of the kings, you know? So Islam came to preserve religion. Islam came to preserve the intellect. What does that mean? It means alcohol and drugs and anything that harms the intellect in Islam is forbidden. Okay? Islam came to preserve wealth. What does that mean? Gambling and, uh, and interest is forbidden. And I'll explain that about gambling and so on. Why? Islam came to preserve marriage. That's when Islam fornication, adultery is forbidden. Islam came to preserve life. That's why killing people unjustly or harming your body or committing suicide is forbidden. These five things, if we preserve them, we will have a healthy and good society. What is the opposite of that? When you do not worship the true God, you start allowing drugs, gambling, interest, fornication. Interest, what is interest? Interest make the rich richer, poor poorer. Interest is a new type of slavery. I, so what I do, I know, if I give you 5,000 pounds, because you are in need of it, I know by next week, you will never be able to give it back to me, because I study you. Yeah? So what I will say to you, look, next week give it to me, 6,000 pounds or 7,000 pounds. By next week, I come to you, I say, where is my money? I say, look, Shamsi, by the way, my name is Shamsi, yeah? What's your name? Ashton. Ashton, yeah, sorry, I forgot your name. Ashton Zain? Alex. You see, I have good memory somehow. <laughs> you know, I forgot about So I will say to you, look, Ashton, give me 7,000 pounds. But you know what? Because you cannot give it to me now, I'll give you two weeks more. By this time, give me 20,000 pounds. And I know, so what I'm doing, Imagine putting that in a big scale. I'm doing it to him, to him, to him, to him. So what I'm doing, I'm making myself richer and I'm utilizing people's need to manipulate them. But Islam teach us that if someone's in need of help, don't utilize his need, help him for the sake of Allah. Even we have a beautiful narration from our Prophet Muhammad wasalam, said, Allah will say to the people in day of judgment, Allah will say to the people in day of judgment, I ask you to feed me, but you never fed me. So the person will say, Oh Allah, you are the creator of everything. You're the provider. How can I feed you? Allah will say, my, my servant, so and so, was in need of food, but you never fed him. If you fed him, I will help you today. You see, likewise, another one says, I've asked you to clothe me, but you never clothed me. He will say, Oh Allah, how can I clothe you? You are the Almighty, the creator. Allah will say to him, My friend, uh, uh, sorry, my servant was in need of garments, of clothes. But you never gave him clothes. You see, Islam, Islam teach us the Muslim like one body. If any part of the body feel pain, the rest of the body feel pain. You know, that's why now we have to understand the, why there's a huge war against Islam. Because this vice I have mentioned, gambling, interest, alcohol, drugs, a fornication, destroy societies. But yes, there's, yet there are some people who does benefit from them. Who are they? Those in power. So those in power, they see Islam as a threat for their business. Because Islam, not just coming to forbid it, Islam, there's punishment for anyone that breaks those laws. Because if you break the laws, 
these five necessities, you destroy yourself and society. So they look at Islam as a threat for their business because they are rich. So what they do? They use their money to make Islam look bad through the media. And this is what's happening now. That's why there's a huge war against Islam because the only religion that's standing firm against evil ones. What do you think what I said so far? Does it make sense? It does. Yes. And the question you ask yourself is, well, how man that existed 1,400 years ago, that is Prophet Muhammad, yeah? Who couldn't read and write. He's coming with his perfect way of life. On the other hand, we have these politicians around the world, in America, Britain, France, you name it, who studied in the best universities around the world, yet they cannot resolve the problems we are facing. Because Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of the creator of everything. And the creator of everything, he knows what is good for us in details and what is bad for us in details. That is one of the proofs to establish why Islam is the truth and why Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of Allah. You know, do you know Andrew Tate? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this guy, yes, uh, this brother, is our brother of Islam. Of course, he said certain things I don't agree with. But to be honest, he said many things which is right. Do you know why? Because this man is a multi, is a multi-millionaire. He, he said something which I always use it. He said, I saw the devil with my own eyes. You know what he meant? Because when he was so rich, he was involved with, with the secret societies or top people. And he saw what they do. And he said, you know what, I, I, I've noticed the only religion that is standing firm against this evil one is Islam. He was a Christian. He said, that's why I become a Muslim. Yes, he said certain things which we don't agree with because due to his lack of knowledge, he's still learning. Remember, he came from crazy background, mm -hmm. crazy lifestyle. But to be honest, many things he said, which from, from our human nature, which himself, he said, you know what, what I believe Islam will agree with me. Not everything. But now what's happening now, there's the evil ones that want to destroy our nature, bro. Our human nature. Literally now, that we don't, people cannot even define what is woman. So literally now, what I can do, I can beat up a woman, which is Haram Islam. And if you come and say you beat up a woman, I said, define woman. If you define this as a woman, she, has a, she was born biologically with a breast and other things, yeah? I said, what about the men that identify women? Are you against them? They say, you're a bigot if you say that. You see, look how it's crazy it's getting, you know? But Allah mentioned that in the Quran a long time ago, that Allah mentioned that Satan will inspire people to change, Allah, to change Allah's creation. You know, Imagine, you know there's, uh, I'm not sure if you've heard about it, there was a man who raped two women. Oh, yeah, yeah. Have you heard about it? Yeah. Then he's going to the courts. Now he's going to the court, they have to sentence him to go to prison. He went dressed like a woman. He said, I identify myself as a woman. Now what do they have to do? They have to put him in prison. Which prison? Female prison. That's it. And for him, it's paradise. That's what he wants. <laughs> but look what Allah said. If the truth follow people's desires, the heavens and the earth be corrupted. Look what's happening. Confusion. Like, literally, I can tell you, listen, bro. I believe I'm a lion. Literally, I'm, I'm a tiger, but I'm trapped in a human body. And every time you have to speak to me, you have to deal with me like a tiger. You know, and I can do things to people, and the police cannot arrest me because I say I'm a tiger. You know, it's how crazy, it's crazy, it's getting crazy, it's unbelievable. That's what I'm saying, brother. When you look to Islam, there's no salvation for us except by following Islam's teaching. You know, Christianity, like I said, I believe in Jesus, no doubt. He's a mighty messenger. But Jesus was not Christian. Christianity was made up by the Romans. They changed Jesus' teaching. They corrupted it. The Bible that we have, we, can, we don't even have it in the pure language of Jesus. We have it in different language. But the Quran that we have is the same Quran that Prophet Muhammad recited to his companions is the same one you know do you have any questions by the way no, ask any question man what country are you from by the way because are your father uh, i'm from here but my father was from egypt egypt Masri. do you speak arabic uh i used to when i was very young yeah. Yeah. alhamdulillah yeah because egyptians there's a lot of uh, there's christians as well in egypt yeah, yeah. yeah. i think it's a mainly muslim country huh? i think it's a mainly islam country it's against what i hear i think it's a mainly islam country in, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. There's a, uh, a majority Muslims, but there's Christians as well. There's Christians in, in, in Syria. You know, that's what we're here for. We're here basically to, to explain what Islam is the truth and to call people to become Muslim, to worship God. Imagine I said to you, look, imagine I say to you, I've been speaking to all of you for maybe 10, 15 minutes, yeah? I'm a multi-millionaire. I really like you guys. I'm going to give you two million pounds as a gift. If, I, if you do take it, what would you say to me? 
Would you, if you do take two million pounds, would you thank me? Not thank you, but I'd also be kind of skeptical. Yeah, but if you do, I'm saying, if you do take it. Oh, if I do take it. You I would thank me, of course. Uh, and if you do take it, you will remember me all the time. Uh, two million pounds is a big money. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes, be skeptical. It's good because I'm going to give you two million pounds on a condition, give me your two eyes. Would you do that? No, I wouldn't. No, go. Because why? Your eyes is more valuable than two million pounds. So why are we not grateful and remember who gave us eyes for free? The second question, yes, we want to be grateful to God. You want to be, you want to worship Him. The question you ask yourself, if you want to buy a gift for your mother, would you buy a gift that your love or your mother love? Likewise, if you want to worship the, the Creator and be grateful to Him, we should worship Him the way He loves. Because the way He loves is objective. The way we love is subjective. That's why he sent the prophets and messengers like Moses, Abraham, Noah, Jesus, the last of the prophet Muhammad. So you, you want to worship God? If you want to worship God according to his teaching, that is an Islamic teaching because it's been preserved. That's for the Bible to be corrupted. If I tell you what is stopping you to become Muslim, what would you answer? What, to be Muslim? Yeah, to become a worshiper of God, the true God, correctly. What's stopping you? What is stopping, stopping? you? Yeah. I have actually noticed before, people have talked to me about Islam, especially in RE class. Yeah. I find it to be much more interesting than Christianity. Yeah. Because, as you said, there's more pure than Christianity. And that's right. The words haven't been tainted. They've yeah. come straight from Muhammad. They have not been tainted at all. That's right. And that's what I really like about it. Yeah. The fact that everything that's been said has been said the whole time. Yeah. And the whole time. So, yeah, go on, sorry. I'd say I'd be more willing to join Islam than Christianity. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, you're saying that, and my, my wife is a revert, by the way. My wife, she was a Christian, okay? She became Muslim before I met her, yeah? And her mother, she's an atheist. She, her, her mother, to be honest, she's confused. One day atheist, one day Christian, I don't know, you know? But her, her, her stepfather is an atheist. Both of them said, if we want to choose any religion, we will choose Islam. Because why? That's why I said, you know, you know when God, when God creates us, He creates us with something called universal tools. What is universal tools? Sound reasoning. You know, if you if allow our sound reasoning and our natural inclination to cooperate the way God created them, naturally will gravitate towards Islam. Why? Because the one that created you with those tools is the same one who sent down Islam. That's why it's like I have a padlock and a key. So you bring many keys, Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, try to open this padlock that you have within you, it doesn't open it. When you come to Islam, perfect. Because the one who made that padlock in you is the same one who sent out that key, which is the revelation. You understand? Mm -hmm. And Islam is a practical. It's not just being in the church, that's it. No, Islam is not just for the people, for the government too. Because when the people start following their desires, then what happens? They start getting mixed up. I'll give you an example to demonstrate to you, yeah? You know, I can go off license. They sell alcohol, yes? I can go, you know, like, before I was, I sell drugs before, yeah? Alhamdulillah, I changed for many years. If I go sell drugs outside of license, the police will come arrest me, but they will not arrest the shopkeeper. Even though we are selling the same item or different item, but it causes the same harm. Okay, alcohol, a lot of crimes is being carried out because of alcohol, yes? Alcohol harms our body, okay? So why the drug dealer is getting arrested and the shopkeeper is not getting arrested when both of them are selling something which harm our bodies. Because alcohol, there's high taxes on it. They're making money from it. That's, what that's when, you, when you have humans, they, 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 they contradict themselves. You know, but when Allah Sharia, Islamic Sharia, Sharia, I mean divine law. And don't be scared by this, what's happening around the world. Oh, Sharia is coming to kill everyone. That is a lie. Yes, there is some Muslims who are foolish ones who misunderstand Islam, who lies against Islam, they are Muslims, but they are ignorant. Who lie against Islam, they say we're coming to, to take over this country, to implement Sharia, which is something, there's aspect of Sharia which only for the leaders and the government. We're not here to do that, because we're not the authority. You understand? This is a lie against Islam, you know? These people, I believe, there are some, some, of them, some of them are hypocrites. But anyway, Sharia, there's many aspects it has. Sharia, take care of your mother, in Sharia. To take care, you know, in Islam, imagine you walk in the street and you see something blocking people's path. If you remove it, that's from Sharia, you got good deeds from Allah. Because why? You are helping the people. You try to take care of the people. Taking care of your mother, which is one of the greatest good deeds in Islam, is from Sharia. But Sharia, holistically, 
when you look at it, Sharia comes to deal with the problems from the roots. Human's law is like when you go to a doctor and he gives you paracetamol. What he's just doing, he just tries to manage the symptoms. He's not dealing with the problem from the roots. So Islam, Sharia deal with the problem from the roots. But human law just likes to cover. The problem is still there, but it's just to cover it. You understand? Because Allah is the know of everything. Humans, they don't know everything. They have deficiency. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, uh, like I said, so when it comes to the, the Islam, like I said, it goes in line with sound reason, natural inclination, and it goes in line with our human nature, generally speaking. You know? So I advise you to become Muslim, bro. You should become Muslim. <coughs> oh, that's why he gave the Quran as well. You want to read more? Yes, I do. You can become Muslim today, then read more after. Up to you. I'm not going to put pressure on you, but I will say to you, brother, you said it makes sense to you. I mean, all of you. No, no, but uh, if you don't want to, my point here is, you said it makes sense to you. What I will say to you, how old are you, by the way? I'm 16. Okay, my wife, should become Muslim when she was 14. I don't remember exactly, yeah? She was younger than you, bro. And she said it did not make sense to me that Jesus is God praying to God and other teaching. You know, I have to go through someone. She said, when I noticed that I become Muslim, you know? So, and, now, and, and Wallahi, three weeks ago, Wallahi, I'm swearing by Allah, not, sorry, not three weeks, a month ago, there was a young boy, his mother became a Muslim before him. He was 11 years old, he became Muslim with us. He had that, because why? You want to connect yourself to your creator. What I was going to say, you never know you're going to die. How many people left their houses, they never come back? How many people won't sleep, they never wake up? You understand? Are you guaranteed to live tomorrow? No. You're not guaranteed, bro. And this life is a test. When Allah created this life, Allah has attributes, mercy, love, forgiveness, anger, mighty. Allah created paradise, which is based upon His mercy and love. Then Allah created the hellfire, which is based upon His anger and mighty. And when Allah, cre so Allah creates paradise, which is pure good. <coughs> create the hellfire, which is pure evil. And He created this life, evil and good. So it's for us to decide to which place, should we, which path. Is it good path? The good path in this dunya, in this life, will lead you to paradise. Because, you know, like I said, there are people like us today, just us talking, joking, having nice conversation, they are dead now in the graves. And that's not the end, because there's day of judgments. And the biggest sin, I guess, Allah will turn away from him. Because we Muslims, we believe if someone, if someone, Islam, was explained to him, You know, music is crazy, man. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you something about music, yeah? Um, but the guy is, uh, he's, in a, he's in a different world. <laughs> so what I was going to say, I was going to mention something. Yeah, Allah will, uh, we, we believe if someone dies and doesn't know about Islam, Allah will not punish him straight away. Allah will judge him because Allah is the most just. But if someone knew about the truth and turned away from it, then that is the biggest crime. And I told you, if I, if I gave you two million pounds, you would thank me straight away. You're not going to say, Shamsi, ah, let me give you another example. Imagine in the house. Or you, tonight you go to your own room. You wake up by the morning and there is a fire everywhere. Everywhere. You try your best to save yourself. And you couldn't. You gave up. I came and I saved your life. What would you say to me? I'd, be, well, I'd just be thankful. You just saved my life. Bro, you be... To yeah. You're going to remember me. You're not going to say to me, Shamsi, give me time to remember you or thank you. you what, but I never gave you a life. What about the one who gave you life for free? Pardon? What about the one who gave you life for free? I'll be ever so thankful for him. So, because he's the one that gave me this life in the first place. That's he it. just helped protect it for longer. That's it, you know. So therefore, and the way to be thankful to him is by following Islamic teaching. Like we demonstrate. So what you read the Quran. I read the Quran many times, yeah, but I don't have to know everything about Islam to accept the foundation which is clear that there's only one God. Because I, even me as, as a preacher, I'm still learning, mm -hmm. you know. But what we tell you, when, what we have explained to you so far is the Islamic foundation. Whatever you're going to learn, it goes back to this foundation you have learned. Mm -hmm. You're not going to learn something African, I never knew that. That's why anyone that accepts Islam never came back and said, you know, I regret accepting Islam. Because rather they get happy after, say, you know what, it's true. Especially when you pray, you know, we go through hardship. You pray five times a day. Imagine I said to you, every time you come to my house, I'll give you 20,000 pounds. Yes, bro, I'm going to come every day, man. What about the one you pray to your creator? And every time you pray, you're getting blessings. 
your sins being removed and you get refreshed and re-energized. The prayer, you know, gives you the power. Subhanallah, praise be to Allah, glory be to Allah. You be a strong person. And when you become a Muslim, the knowledge of Islam gives you insight. You cannot be deluded by slogans and deception, you know. Like you say, freedom. What does it mean freedom? To become a slave of desires or a slave of society? The true freedom to become a servant of your creator. So what I would say to you, bro, if it makes sense to you, just learn, become Muslim. To become Muslim, there's two testimonies that you say, which I've broken it down for you. That there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness Muhammad, the messenger of Allah. And the rest of the pillars, prayer and so on, it comes back to these two pillars. That I should be grateful, I should worship my creator, and I should worship him according to the teaching of the last prophet, is Muhammad, alayhi salatu salam. That's how you become Muslim. Then step by step you start learning, bro. Wallahi. You know, imagine you die today, may Allah forbid, yeah? What would be your excuse before your God for not accepting the truth that you think would be valid? No, accepting the truth. Yeah, accepting Islam, which you know you can as it's true, and it makes sense. Like, you'd want to enjoy life, you wanted to enjoy life. See your desires, like what you said about. Freedom. No, no, no. Uh, I'm saying, imagine you die today, yeah. and God said to you, Why you did not accept Islam when you knew it's the truth? What would you say to the God the Almighty, the creator of everything? Which excuse you think, by saying it to your God, will save you from his punishment? Well, so that you didn't know for sure that it was real when you were alive. But now that you're in his presence, it's real. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that, imagine now, because you say it makes sense to you. Yeah. And you believe that's the truth. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So imagine the day of judgment, God said to you, okay, well, imagine you die today, may Allah forbid, and you have not accept Islam. So I haven't converted. Yeah, you haven't converted. Yeah, yeah. you know the word. <laughs> yeah. You haven't converted. And God said to you, why did you not convert when the truth was clear to you? What excuse, what reason you think, if I say it to God, will save you from his punishment? I'm not really sure. I don't really think I'd have words you have to nothing. Yeah. There's nothing. Well, like, you know what? I always use this to make you reflect on yourself that nothing is stopping you except is the whisper of the devil. Mm -hmm. Prophet Muhammad told us when someone wants to become Muslim, because remember, becoming a Muslim, you're becoming a true servant of the creator of everything. Mm -hmm. Satan is not going to stop, start whispering to your mind. He will try to bring anything about your family. Uh, that's why I always mention this example. Or this thing. The reason people don't accept Islam, even if it makes sense to them and it's clear, it boils down to two factors. Either it's a psychological factor, meaning they're arrogant or they like to do some evil things which Islam forbids, you know, or a social factor because they're scared if they become Muslim, their family will turn against them and so on. But none of these factors will save you before God. You're a big man, you understand? You're 15 or 16? 16. Now. 16, bro. You understand? You're a big person, you know? So 16, you have your own choice. To, you can make your own decision. So this is not a joke. This is a serious matter of life, of hell and paradise. That's why I invite you to become Muslim. But like I said, I'm just explaining to you and I'm saying to you, look, it makes sense. You believe it's the truth, become Muslim. And even yourself, you said before, you gravitate towards Islam more than Christianity. Alhamdulillah. So, Become Muslim, inshallah, and then learn step by step. Ready? Huh? You, you want to become Muslim now? now? Yeah, yeah. Maybe when I get home. Well, yeah, but, brother, if you go home, I mean, I want to get a reward. But I, look, I don't want to put in pressure. Yeah? Mm -hmm. If it, it makes sense and you believe the truth, and you say, you know what, I believe the truth. Then become Muslim now. We tell you what to say, which is you agreed with it and you accept it, that Islam is the truth. And then when you go home, you learn more. I will and you got a witness. I definitely will, because it is actually a very interesting topic. Like this whole discussion as a whole yeah. was very interesting and piqued my interest. Yeah. And I like the conversations as a whole. Yeah, yeah. I can see you're you're, you're a good listener. Like, I mean, all of you, but I can see you're like a more. Do you have any question? Me? Yeah, ask any question that you want. Because just me, I'll be speaking. I speak. You speak more as well. Um, when you said that he, you know, Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. He couldn't read or write. Yeah, he couldn't read or write. I heard somewhere that that's why he wasn't corrupted in a way because he couldn't read or write. He couldn't read some books from people who were corrupt, like the people that have been rich. You know, the rich people. Yeah. They have kind of books because he didn't read that. He was corrupted by their words because they made it. You know, he's gonna think that not him specifically, but yeah. people are gonna think that that's how you get to that position. That's right. But, no, you st we say, sorry to cut you there, yeah? you, you, you're, you're right, but we say that is a proof because he, he couldn't read and write. So all this information he brought to mankind, where he got it from? He cannot read it and he couldn't write or none of that to write it down. So therefore, the, the Muslim scholars used 
this that he couldn't read and, and write to show he must be a messenger of the Most High. Like, like I said about the five things that he, he came to preserve, all this information, all this uh, conduct and, and uh, uh, life um, uh, uh, rules and regulations that cannot come from a normal human being, bro. Especially it's perfect and it makes sense and it's good for us individually and collectively. So that's, you, you know what you're doing? You are making our belief stronger by using this argument. You should become Muslim brother today, now. Mullah, you know, mashallah, this person, mashallah. I have found a question. Yeah. If I find, if I look to the earth and I found one diamond, mm -hmm. okay, I will sit. I will take it or I will go. I am I think a little bit. Then I come back and took it. What, uh, what, what do you think? What about the diamond? The, the diamond. You saw the diamond in, this in the earth. And uh, I have to think a little bit. Oh, because you just need to process what you saw because it's valuable. Yes, exactly. No, it, that's it. That's what this is. Yeah. No, that's it, it. It's basically saying that, of course, if you see a diamond, you know, uh, something very valuable, valuable. I mean, put aside someone dropped it or something. If you see something valuable, valuable, you're not going to think, you know, well, let me go home and come back, take it. You will take it. It's something very valuable. Of course, except if you think, you know, someone dropped it. But yeah, even if someone dropped it, you would take it to protect it. Yeah, exactly. So Islamic teaching, that's what you have presented to you, is more valuable than that. It's your life. This is based upon your life, you know. Alhamdulillah. That your, look, you mentioned a good point that how man, that's why we use. Prophet Muhammad couldn't read and write. And it's coming, it's a perfect way of life. It's impossible to come from a normal human being. He must be the messenger of Allah. And Allah, the, the creator of everything, he will not choose a liar to convey his message. You know, how many years we've been cutting off, we've been cut off from worshiping the true God. You know, and look, while we're speaking, we're benefiting from God's uh, blessings, the air, the oxygen, your eyes, you know, the liquid, and everything in our eyes, the liquid in our ears, all of that, you understand? So he's like, he, I understand, because I've been doing this for the last 15 years. Some people say, yeah, give me time, that, then they become Muslim. But some people, they become Muslim straight away. And I'm telling you, I've experienced for the last 15 years, no one ever came to me and says, you know what, Shamsi, I regret becoming a Muslim. Rather, that's why we don't, we don't say convert, we say revert. Mean you're going back to your original state. But because you are born in a Christian family or non-Islamic family, then they teach you the wrong things. But Allah will not judge you based because of that. Now, because you're a big man, you have your own knowledge, you have your own intellect, you have your own choice. So you either accept or reject. But to go home and do it, you can do it here, alhamdulillah. You don't have to be at home doing it. Alhamdulillah, but I always emphasize, bro, make sense, is the truth and is it clear to you, become Muslim, because shaitan is trying to stop you. You know, just now, one English young boy became Muslim. How old is he? Maybe 17 or... Yeah, he's 15, 16, 16, 16, he became Muslim. He, was he took shahada. As soon as you said... He was yeah, yeah, he took shahada. You know, he took shahada, alhamdulillah. And then you from here? From the Cardiff? Oh, Cardiff, yeah. Ah, okay. All of you from Cardiff? Yeah, yeah. Huh? Where are you from? Where? Bulgaria. Ah, Bulgaria. Okay, okay, okay. Inshallah. Yeah, yeah. So, alhamdulillah, man. Do you have other questions? No, I don't. So, you ready to become Muslim now? What's stopping? Not now. Probably, if there were to be anything that would stop me, it would probably be doubts of myself as a person. Okay. Something I want to find out myself first. Okay, no problem. No, no problem then. You want you want more? No problem. But what I would say, when you leave, because you see all of you smart boys, yeah? When you leave, don't take this information and just, you know, no, you have to, you have the book. And even in that book, it tells you how to become Muslim, understand? But if you think, you know what, I want to be more sure with myself, and there's no problem, you know? So, uh, do you have no questions, nothing? Yeah? Okay. Brother, you have a question? Oh, no, I don't. Okay. I'll let you go. A very nice discussion, though. No, really but, you know, I pray to Allah, bless all of you, you know, but... It was my pleasure talking to you. I literally pleasure. enjoyed the, the conversation with you a lot, man. Have a nice weekend, yeah? yeah. All right.